Hi, welcome to the Book of Voice, and I'm here with Anthony Livingston, who is with Distracted Drivers Device, and this week being the Teen Driver Awareness Week, I thought it was great to have Anthony come on and talk about his device that is actually stopping teens from texting and driving. Anthony, welcome. Hi, nice to see you. So tell us a little bit about the device and what made you invent it. Well, the device itself is, uh, it goes directly into the start of a vehicle and stops people from distracted driving. Uh, the reason I went after that was there seemed to be a big issue with it a number of years ago. Um, people swerving and not paying attention and so I decided to tackle it head on. So tell us a little bit about how you get the, the device installed and what does it, it specifically do and does it work with your normal car functions and any kind of distractions that you would have? It works with uh, all vehicles. Um, it works with all regular uh, Bluetooth and phone um, capabilities. It is hardwired directly into the starter on a GPS Elite device from past time and then we have a dock that reads your phone. So what it does is we have to take the phone out of sight and out of hand. It goes into the glove box, gets read by the dock, and then allows the vehicle to start. If the phone is not on the dock, the car will not start. Um, it sends tattletale uh, text to the administrator or the owner of the vehicle, so you can monitor their driving awareness as well. Well, that's great. With this week being Teen Driver Awareness Week, or Safety Week, that's a great opportunity. So, you know, I have a son that's 15 years old, and I'm, I'm a little bit worried about him getting his actual uh, driving, his driver's license at 16. So when he's going out in the world and texting and driving, you see how many fatalities there are out in the world, that's going to be able to allow me to make sure that he's not focusing on texting, he's actually focusing on the road. So tell us a little bit about this Tattletale program. Well, the administrator or the owner of the vehicle, like yourself, would purchase the uh, distracted driving device, have it installed in their vehicle, and then you would register a number of phones on that dock device in order for the vehicle to be used by that person. What happens then is they are allowed to start the vehicle with their phone in the glove box on the dock. If they pull their phone off of the dock, doesn't matter if the car is moving or not, it will send you a tattletale text stating, that so-and-so pulled the phone off the dock at this specific time in this vehicle going however fast down whatever road. But it doesn't stop the car. It doesn't stop the car. Um, that's just a safety protocol. We could technically stop, stop the car, but we're just not going to do that due to liability. We're finding with the young kids that are, are testing the vehicle for us, we have about 20 of them out there right now, that it takes a day or two for them to really understand what it's doing and to stop pulling the phone off the dock but after a couple of days go by they are more aware and they actually see more people texting and driving or distracted driving around them and now they're starting to take a lot more. So how is that adoption? Do you think that they're going to more and more teens will start to adopt and more adults because it's not just teens right? There's I'm guilty of it myself and I think Lorianne will be the first one to admit that I, I definitely text and drive and I shouldn't be. So what are the things that will actually help this adoption of people stopping texting and driving? Because it is a serious problem. Yeah, putting this in the vehicle um, will help people stop it. it. It is forcing them to put it on the dock in order to start the vehicle. Regardless of the Tattletale app, if people are willing to put this in their vehicle and police themselves, it might take a couple days for them to get used to it, but what we're finding is that once people commit to doing it, it's not an issue after a week or so. They don't even think about it anymore. It just goes on the dock, they start the vehicle, and they're gone. They go to where they need to be, take the phone off the dock, and again, it just doesn't affect them anymore. It, it takes a little bit of learned experience, like I say, probably a couple days, but after that, people are really committing to policing themselves and using the device. Now, tell us when they get into the car, are they able to start the car without it being in the dock? No. Um, we have safety protocols that override that. If there was an emergency issue, they could override it. Um, and you'd have to read the instructions when you purchase one to figure out what they are. Uh, other than that, no, if they don't put the phone on the dock, then the car is not able to be started. So again, it's also a theft deterrent device as well. Uh, because if you don't have a registered phone for that vehicle, the vehicle will not start. That's great. So where can they buy one of these devices? Uh, they can go to distracteddrivingdevice.com. 
Uh, we're starting to work with some retailers around the nation right now. Hopefully they'll be out to them by the end of November. But right now we're selling directly through our website on distracteddrivingdevice.com. What else would you like them to know about the distracted driver's device? Uh, everything they need to know is on the distracteddrivingdevice.com. There are interactive videos there, uh, national campaign uh, commercials. There's how it works, and there's also comparison uh, between us and our competitors. Great. Thank you for joining us on The Book of Voice. We look forward to seeing you next week, and don't forget to follow us online or on Facebook on thebookofvoice.com. We look forward to seeing you soon.